Welcome back to Z-Speed and thanks for tuning back in. Today we'll be installing this Cobra cold air intake from PRL on our 10th gen Civic SI. So if you're interested in learning how to install this, just stay tuned. Now, before we get started on the install, it'll make it much easier if you place your car on ramps or jack stands to elevate the front of the bumper here so we can get underneath, remove some plastic push pins uh, and remove part of the under shroud. We'll need access to place the filter down in this area later, but most of the work will be done up top in the engine bay, which is easy access. So to get started, we're going to go ahead and release these two metal bands that hold this corrugated intake tube to the air box. There's just two of these bands here, uh, aluminum in nature here. And then basically you can use a Phillips screwdriver or I think it's an eight millimeter socket. Don't quote me on that one to just loosen those up and we'll take those off in a little bit. But we want to go ahead and loosen those now. Then we're going to attack the mass airflow sensor, remove that. We're going to detach the harness from the mass airflow sensor sensor and we'll also have to detach it from the air box itself and we're just gonna let it dangle in the engine bay after that and we're gonna put our fast airflow sensor aside. So now it's time to remove the wire harness from the mass airflow sensor. Be very gentle with this tab. It's easy to snap these off. I've done it before on other cars. Just a slight push down and then pull and it should release. Now that the harness is removed, we can go ahead and take our Phillips screwdriver, remove the two screws that are holding the mass airflow sensor into the intake tube, and then go ahead and slide the mass airflow sensor out of the tube. At this point, you wanna go ahead and visualize your mass airflow sensor. Check it out for any dirt or debris. If you find some, now's a great time to take mass airflow sensor cleaner and spray it down really well and make sure that your mass airflow sensor is nice and clean. You can then set it aside and allow it to dry while we do the install so it'll be ready to go once the new intake tube is placed in the vehicle. So now it's time to remove the wire harness from the air box itself. There's just a small plastic clip holding this wire harness to the air box. Uh, needle nose pliers is required to remove this. Uh, it's a little bit easier if you have some angled needle nose pliers to squeeze these together. Just be very gentle. It's made of plastic and it'll be easy to break. If, it, if you do break it, it's not the end of the world because we won't be using that clip again. Okay, next up we have four eight millimeter bolts that we're gonna remove to remove the top of this air box. There's one, two, three, and four, and then right beside it's a 10. We're gonna wanna release that as well. And basically just remove those and the top of the air box will come off pretty easily here. So I'm gonna start off by removing all four of the eight millimeter bolts first. Remember there's uh, one on each corner here and they're quite long bolts so it may take you a few minutes to get these bolts completely out of the engine bay and once we get all four of the eight mil bolts out we can go ahead and attack that one last 10 mil bolt in the corner that's right next to the other eight um, once you get this 10 mil bolt out now then the whole top of the air box should lift off and out of the engine bay quite easily. And that's also why we released that um, clamp earlier so we could just slide it right off that uh, hose. And you can see now that the top is out of the engine bay. And now you can just remove the air filter from the box as well. Okay, I've got one more 10 mil bolt for you to remove before we move the next part of the intake box. Um, this one's loose right here. I told you I already removed it, but it's still sitting in the engine bay, but it is loose. Here's the other 10 mil bolt that we need to remove right down there. So you're gonna need an extension to get down to that, but go ahead and remove that 10 mil bolt and the other 10 mil bolt out of the engine bay, and we're ready 
to separate the top of the air box from the bottom of the air box. So at this point now, I've placed the rest of the air box outside the vehicle to make this a lot clearer and easier to understand what we're about to do here. It's not super complicated, but I just wanted to make sure you understood exactly what was happening here. Um, this is the bolt we just removed right here and this bolt right down here. We just removed that one. That's the last one we removed. So that's where we're at this point. Uh, there's two more bolts holding the lower half of this air box um, from underneath the car. And we're gonna leave those attached for this next procedure. We're not gonna release those yet. And you have to go underneath the car and go uh, underneath the engine shroud to access those. And we'll do that a little bit later. We're gonna leave it attached right now, but you can see this thing's quite uh, elaborate here. It's, two pieces it's attached by a rubber grommet or a couple rubber grommets actually this is the larger part of it right here i'll show you the other half or the other grommet in a second but we need to separate these two while it's you know still attached the lower half still attached to the uh, vehicle itself so i just wanted you to understand what it looked like outside the vehicle so you could see it in its entirety here Okay, now we're going to show you how to separate the two. It's not very difficult. Uh, this is the other smaller rubber grommet that I was talking about. I'm gonna show you right here. This little piece right down here, that's the other one. And that's the larger one that we already looked at. Those are the two points of attachment that we're gonna to need to break loose from the bottom half of this air box. It's not gonna to be too hard. You're not gonna be, you're gonna be standing in front of this. I'm gonna stand behind it so you can see what I'm doing, but you're just gonna pull forward and you're gonna kind of just flex it a little bit. Um, you won't be able to flex it quite as much as I just did, but you should be able to jar it from side to side, enough to break this larger grommet loose. And then this smaller grommet should come on out after that uh, the larger grommet is the one you want to break free first right here so once you get the larger piece loose the smaller one should follow pretty easily so you know it's not that hard you may just have to tug at it for a little bit um, it shouldn't be too crazy to break it loose I took the whole thing out in one piece I don't recommend that and I'll show you why I did that and how I did it in a little bit but this is definitely the easiest way to do it um, separate these two pieces and then go ahead and remove this top part out and then all we have left now is the uh, bottom piece and we're going to come down here and release those two bolts holding the the bottom half of the air box in a few minutes those two bolts right there i'll show you how to do that and access those two bolts but yeah this is the easiest way is to separate this thing don't try to take it out is one piece so to gain access to those two bolts, we're gonna to need to remove the under engine shroud. There's a 10 mil bolt right here. You got a bunch of push pins holding the front bumper to the under shroud. Uh, there's also two hex bolts, one on the driver's side, one on the passenger side. Here's one right here on the driver's side. And there's one on the passenger side as well. So let's go all the way along the front of the bumper and remove all those push pins, those two two 10 mil bolts and the two hex bolts. Um, that'll release it from the front bumper. You also need to remove the uh, under shroud that covers the oil filter and oil um, fill port or drain point, sorry. Um, mine's plastic right here, yours should be metal, but you wanna remove this part too. You need to just get rid of the entire under engine shroud to access those two bolts, unfortunately. And um, you may need to remove the ones from the front bumper to gain really good access to those two bolts. Um, I was already gonna pull my front bumper off right here, so from now on, you'll see some vantage points that you wouldn't normally see with the bumper on, but I needed to take my bumper off because I was also installing a intercooler at the same time I was installing this PRL intake. So you get to see a bunch of uh, vantage points that you wouldn't normally see because um, I've removed the bumper. You're not gonna want to remove your front bumper, tr trust me, unless you have to. So um, that's why you'll be able to see so clear is because my front bumper has been removed. So these are the two 10 mil bolts and that's what it looks like from underneath the car. We're gonna be breaking those two loose and pulling them out. And that'll uh, detach the lower half of the air box from the car 
itself. So, you know, however you want to get in there. Uh, I like to use these little mountain wrenches. They're, they get you into some tight spots. You can pick up a set of mountain wrenches from Amazon if you're interested. But anyway, go ahead and break those loose, remove those two 10 mil bolts, and we can lift the uh, bottom part of the air box out. So the reason I don't recommend that you pull this thing out as one piece is because I had to separate the intercooler piping on the driver's side just to get enough um, wiggle room to move this air box by. With that attached to the intercooler, I was not able to pull this box in its entirety out of the engine bay. So you're definitely gonna have to detach something to get some wiggle room in there. So after releasing the intercooler piping and moving a bunch of other stuff around, uh, it took me forever to finally wiggle this thing out. So it was definitely not worth um, trying to take it out as one entire piece. It was a lot of pain and suffering involved. Don't even think about doing this, but I did want you to see that I did pull it out as one piece, but uh, I would never do it like that again. So yeah, it finally separated, but it was way too much work. Okay, now that we've got that ridiculous air box out of the way, we're gonna be removing this little black bracket right here. Um, we don't, no longer need that, and it's gonna be very easy to remove. There's two 10 mil bolts holding that on. There was a bracket right down there. See where that little hole is? I removed that already. That was holding the bottom part of the air box on. We didn't need it, so I got rid of it. Uh, you don't have to get rid of that, but you can, I did. And then we're gonna be relocating the clutch line by removing that 10 mil bolt, placing a new little a uh, custom bracket in there and then reattaching it. So it should be pretty easy and straightforward. Okay, now it's time to remove this little bracket and get this out of the way. It's just held onto the frame of the car with two 10 mil bolts and they're pretty easy to access. I'm gonna use a uh, 10 mil mountain wrench to break this lower bolt loose and it uh, comes off pretty easily. No problems there, but it just took quite a bit of uh, time to get it out. So there's a second bolt that's right above it that you can't quite see from this angle. And I decided to use my impact gun on this one and uh, it was a lot quicker with the impact gun. So if you've got one, just hit those with the impact gun. But yeah, now we've got this second bolt loose. This whole bracket just comes out and we're all done with that one. Okay, PRL provides a billet aluminum relocation clutch bracket here. You can see that large hole to the far right. That's where a hex screw will be bolting into the frame of the car. And then the little hole on the left here is where we're going to be relocating the original 10 mil bolt for the clutch line. So it basically you're gonna need a hex uh, wrench to uh, attach this on there and the great news is that it's got a little guide pin you can see that little hole right there that lines up with the guide pin so it's pretty much idiot proof this thing will only fit one place and the guide pin makes sure that it's lined up correctly so just make sure the guide pin gets in that little square hole right there and then you can go ahead and tighten down that hex screw uh, with your uh, allen wrench and just snug it up real tight and you should be good there to go. So once you get this snugged up, now what we're gonna do after that is grab the clutch line in the original 10 mil bolt and we're going to uh, place it uh, on that other hole to the left of the hex screw there. So basically we're moving it over, you know, roughly about an inch or maybe just a little more than an inch to the left. And that's gonna give us the room we need to get the cold air intake through this area and into the fender well. So they need to be moved just a little bit to the left to accommodate the um, cold air intake. So that's the only reason we're doing it. Doesn't really affect the clutch line. Um, there's no problems uh, with the relocation at all. So just snug it up nice and tight. And now we're all done relocating the clutch line. Okay, now we're gonna show you the lower part of the cold air intake and how it's assembled. I'm gonna clean out the inside of this intake tube. I had a little dust in there. 
So I hit it with a little 303 aerospace protectant and hit it with a lint-free cloth. Just make sure that your uh, air duct pieces are nice and clean on the inside before you start assembling anything. Now all this will be done inside the car. You'll be putting all these parts together inside the wheel well, but I'm gonna do it outside of the wheel well just so you can see how it works. See those two screw holes right there? That's the end that the filter will be going on to. So make sure you have your filter clamp on there when you go to uh, insert it onto this uh, end of the cold air intake ducting. And it will take a little bit of force here, so you may have to uh, work at it for a minute. Just be careful not to damage your um, filter. It'll be easy to bend it if you're pushing too hard. So just go nice and easy till you get to slide on. Once you get to slide on, just push it down all the way as far as it'll go. And then we can go ahead and tighten the clamp. So you'll need to slide the clamp uh, bolt down so you can actually visualize it from underneath the car. Remember, we'll be working from underneath the car and kind of looking straight up. So you wanna make sure that bolt's in clear view that so you can tighten it. It's an eight millimeter bolt, so go ahead and tighten that down right now. And once we get that tightened up, we can go ahead and put um, part of the bracket that holds this part of the duct to the frame of the car. So go ahead and uh, I'm gonna do that now, but of course you'll be doing all this under the car, but this is just for your benefit so you can see clearly what's going on. So here's the bracket that holds this part of the ducting to the frame of the car. You can see there's gonna be two 10 mil bolts holding this part, and then there's gonna be two more that hold it to the frame of the car. So I'm just gonna loosely thread these on right here. You wanna make sure that uh, they're on there semi-tight, but not all the way, because we may have to adjust this um, bracket a little bit once we bolt it to the car. So go ahead and hand tighten those now. Okay, this is what the lower piece will look like once it's all assembled, and it'll be sitting right in this area right here. Now granted, you won't be doing it this way unless your front bumper has been removed like mine is, but I'm assuming that you're gonna go through the engine bay with just the duct only. You're gonna be coming through this hole from the engine bay and popping out on this side. You'll be accessing everything with that little flap you see where my right hand's pushing against. That little flap right there is gonna be your uh, only point of access. You'll be looking up through that flap and trying to do all this, which, you know, is gonna be a little more difficult than the way I'm doing it, of course, but at least you'll know exactly what to expect and what it's supposed to look like. Um, now that you've got that little piece of duct through, you'll go ahead and put your filter on and then you'll put th this lower part of the bracket on at that point. And that'll get you to where we're at right now. You can see I'm kind of struggling just a little bit. It's probably because I assembled it all together and I'm coming in from the reverse direction versus coming in through the engine bay. That's why I'm, I think I'm having a little issues getting it in there, but eventually I get it uh, in there successfully. And now you can see where the bracket lines up onto the frame rail right here. And we're gonna go ahead now and place one 10 mil bolt through the right hole. This one will just screw right on in there and tighten up no problem. And you're gonna go ahead and loosely bolt that in. But the screw to the left of it now, you're gonna need an actual um, nut to go on the back side of this. So you're gonna need uh, a 10 mil bolt and a nut and you're gonna run it through the bracket, through the frame and then to the nut and then tighten it up. So it's a little harder to get this second bolt in because you've got the couple moving parts there versus just the bolt going in the hole, but it's not that bad. Now, once you've got all four of your 10 mil bolts uh, placed into the correct position, you wanna go ahead and hand tighten everything. You don't wanna torque anything down yet because we're gonna go on the inside of the engine bay. We have another brace that attaches to the other side of this cold air intake. And once we get that uh, brace mounted, then we can torque everything down. Okay, now we're inside the engine bay and we have the next part of the brace. It's gonna acquire uh, two 10 mil bolts to the frame and then one 10 mil bolt to the other side of the uh, cold air intake. So first we're gonna go ahead and place the two onto the frame here. And it's the two towards the right. There's one hole that's gonna remain empty. So I'm gonna go ahead and just place that one in there. It's not too hard at all. Remember, we're just gonna hand tighten everything. We're not gonna snug anything up yet. And if you're wondering why that green rag is stuffed in there uh, into the intake tube, it's because I just don't want any debris to actually get lodged in there while I'm doing all this. You know, sometimes little bits of dust and dirt can fall in 
to uh, the duct while you're doing this work in the engine bay. So now I've got those two on and now I've got one more 10 mil bolt that I'm gonna place through the brace and into the other side of the cold air intake. And it's pretty simple to do. Just hand thread everything. So now we've got all of our bolts hand threaded. Now we can go through and just tighten everything up, snug it all up. I don't have any torque specs for you on that. Just make sure everything's nice and snug and, and then we'll be done with the uh, mounting brackets. Okay, now it's time to go ahead and place the mass airflow sensor housing and the lower silicone tube onto the part that we've just placed into the engine bay. So you can see I've got the two metal bands right there. I've got them positioned so I can access them pretty easily. And now we're just gonna loosely fit this tube on here. We're not gonna um, fully seat it yet. We're gonna put all three of these pieces on, both pieces of um, silicone tubing and the mass airflow sensor housing before we start tightening everything up. So there's two different types of mass airflow sensor housings. There's a street version and a race version and I happen to actually have gotten the race version so it's going to require a tune before we can uh, start it up and drive the vehicle and I'll talk more about that in a minute but uh, if you've got the street version all you have to do is just put this thing together and you're ready to go. Uh, it's no tune needed here. So now I'm fitting the other silicone tube on loosely and then we're gonna attach it to the uh, other part of the intake and we're gonna go ahead and position everything and get the bands um, in good position as well and then we can start tightening everything up. Okay, now that we've got all the pieces in the engine bay, you can go ahead and start rotating your tubes to get them just right. You may have to uh, rotate it just a little bit to get the PRL logo facing forward correctly. And you also wanna make sure that your mass airflow sensor housing is um, seated correctly. You want the mass airflow sensor right on top. And so you may have to rotate things a little bit to get everything just right. But once you get it all put together and everything feels nice and tight, uh, you wanna go ahead and then place your metal um, clamps around the ends in the correct position. And then you can go ahead and tighten those down. Okay, it comes with two new bolts, Allen wrench required to place the mass airflow sensor back in. You wanna make sure that arrow is facing towards the passenger side when you place it back on the housing and it's a nice snug fit in this uh, housing. So hats off to PRL, it's a beautiful intake. Everything fits just perfect. So now once you get it placed in there, we're gonna go ahead and tighten the Allen bolts into position and it's pretty simple to do that you just snug them up it doesn't you don't have to go crazy with those and now we can go ahead and plug the uh, mass airflow sensor back in this is upside down right here so flip it this way and it plugs right in and just be very gentle make sure that it clicks in and you're all done at this point once it clicks in now let's take a look at the finished product. You can see it's beautiful. The PRL logo is facing towards us. You've got your mass airflow sensor, and then you've got another PRL logo on the larger tubing that's going down to the filter area. Uh, this is a beautiful fitting um, cold air intake. I would recommend this to anybody that's looking for a cold air intake. It just fits great, uh, well constructed. That being said, if you're running a cold air intake, you ha do have to take precautions. You do not want to be going through any large puddles that will actually come up to the level of your front bumper or actually go higher than the level of your front bumper. See those two little holes right there? Once you get into water that deep, water could come up through those two holes and actually get sucked up into your cold air intake. So if you like to run through a lot of puddles all the time, or you like to snorkel your car, um, a cold air intake is not for you. You wanna go with a more traditional short ram intake. But if you were just going through normal puddles that are just your average, you know, depth, not very deep at all. Um, this is not going to affect you, so don't worry about that. It's just those super deep puddles that could cause a problem. 
Now, if you've installed the street version, you're now ready for your test drive. But if you've installed the race version, which is only for track and off-road use, you will need some software from Hondata or KTuner and you will need the race version of that software. Without that, you will not be able to get the correct air fuel ratios to run this PRL cold air intake. So make sure that you have the appropriate software to install before you uh, purchase this cold air intake if you get the race version. So we're gonna go ahead and do a tune to get the appropriate air fuel ratio map. So with the Honda Atta Flash Pro software, there's actually a little box you can check for the race version of the PRL Cobra Cold Air Intake. I went ahead and checked that, and I added six PSI of boost on top of my current boost. So just make sure you're familiar with using this software and uploading it to your ECU before you uh, do this install so you're already familiar with how to tune your car. So let's do a cold start and take it out for a test run. The turbo sounds that you just heard were a bit exaggerated because I had my GoPro mounted inside my bumper next to the filter head there. So that's what you were hearing, but you would not believe with your window down how much of these turbo noises that you can actually hear. You can hear the turbo spool up and the wastegate open. This uh, cold air intake really wakes this car up. So you're really going to enjoy all the sounds coming from your vehicle now. So if this video helped you out, don't forget to give me a big old fat thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up with all my latest videos. And until next time, you know what to do. Just keep on repairing.